Hello and welcome to this uh, video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a subject that uh, I've been uh, waiting to cover for quite a while and that will probably be interested, interesting to uh, some of you guys who like uh, especially old webbings and uh, military equipment and um, uh, mashups of, of uh, different countries' uh, equipment. And that's basically covering the subject of, uh, of Norwegian uh, webbing from 1970 until uh, 2000 because the in that time frame the webbing didn't uh, change uh, fundamentally at all uh, the same uh, principles uh, apply and basically the small uh, change that uh, did occur uh, didn't change any of the fundamentals uh, so we're going to be comparing it or taking quite uh, big steps uh, from 1970 until the 2000s basically covering uh, two major steps, uh, discussing what uh, the major differences are, uh, and so on. And let's just get uh, right into it. So starting a little bit with the backstory. Uh, Norway in the 1960s were using uh, mostly US made or US uh, copied equipment. Uh, so uh, Norway would have used uh, the M1 Garand and with it the M1923 uh, cartridge belt uh, with the respective uh, uh, field equipment that comes along with this. In the 1960s, uh, the Norwegian uh, high command decided that it was time to modernize, uh, it was time to uh, phase out some of the old equipment and kind of get into the modern world of small arms and uh, equipment. So, they didn't really modernize that much on the uh, webbing, but anyways. Uh, so, uh, in the mid-1960s, they decided to adopt the German uh, G3 rifle as the AG3. Uh, and in 1970, the AG3 uh, were produced in sufficient numbers that they could finally be uh, issued out to uh, troops. So. Um, they of course continue to use uh, some of the old equipment that could be used with the new equipment and uh, basically uh, starting off with the equipment, uh, the webbing equipment I'm wearing right now, we can of course see the uh, magazine pouches. Uh, we have uh, four pockets in total for one magazine each. These are actually the second pattern of uh, ammunition pouch. Uh, the first pattern were exactly the same in uh, shape, but they had a different uh, press stud uh, for uh, for the uh, flap. Uh, I'm going to cover a bit more in detail later on, but just as you know, uh, letting you know. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm uh, included this is because the first pattern is quite rare to get, and these would have come uh, fairly quickly. So. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, braces right here, which are the US uh, M44 uh, braces or suspenders if you're American. Uh, basically, these are unchanged, these are American made. Uh, um, nothing uh, special about uh, these. And the belt is a US uh, M1943 uh, belt. And then we have uh, on the left side, we have you can see it, the bayonet and its frog, and also the uh, water bottle and uh, water bottle pouch. Uh, this is a Norwegian made copy of the US uh, M1910 uh, water bottle and carrier, uh, which we're going to compare uh, soon enough. And if we move around to the right side, we have the US M43 uh, field show. Uh, this, as you can hear, uh, runs quite a lot. Um, uh, not very practical uh, when you're uh, out on patrol. This is going to make quite a lot of noise. Um, so basically that's uh, it uh, as far as uh, taking a look at the webbing while I'm wearing it. Uh, now I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to jump uh, forward in time until about the late 1980s. Uh, taking a look at uh, what's changed, what's uh, uh, what's the same. But before that, I uh, should perhaps show you what the backside looks like. Oh, 
Okay, and now let's move on. Okay, so here we are with the late 1980s uh, uh, version of the exact same webbing. Uh, things that have changed are the uh, braces, the belt, the water bottle, and the uh, e oh, the e tool uh, carrier, uh, which we're all going to take a uh, closer look at uh, uh, soon enough. The pouches are the same. Uh, by this time, the the uh, third pattern of uh, I mean of ammunition pouches were uh, in common use, but these uh, would remain in use uh, until the uh, as long as uh, this uh, setup was uh, used until the mid 2000s. Uh, the bayonet and its frog is the exact same. Uh, of course, you had the second pattern by this point, but. Uh, these were still continued uh, to be used, uh, of course, and uh, of course I put on my lovely uh, M75 jacket because by this point in main uh, army usage this was the uh, common uh, uh, field uniform. Uh, just giving you a 360 degree view. Okay, so that's basically it as a basic overview. Uh, now we're going to take a close look at all of the uh, lovely details of and comparing the different parts, the old to the new and uh, so on. Um, so let's uh, just uh, get uh, right to it. Okay, so I figured we might as well start off with the belt itself. The uh, At the bottom we have the US uh, M36 uh, pistol belt and at the top we have a Norwegian made uh, copy. Uh, and as you'll notice they are pretty much exactly the same in form and function. The only differences are basically m uh, very minor uh, uh, stylistic uh, differences in some of the rivets and eyelets and so on, uh, which we'll uh, take a look at uh, now. And just so you can see, the nothing going on on the back side, but there you go. Now, if we take them back around, of course, of course, the uh, US uh, uh, pistol belt has a uh, button here, goes on the other side, and that's uh, basically so you can at attach a, uh, a 1911 pistol uh, magazine uh, pouch uh, here, or a US uh, uh, M1 carbine uh, magazine pouch here. Uh, and Norway decided to retain it. Uh, really, at this point, the uh, Norway didn't use the M1911 at all, uh, and the US carbine was really on its way out. Uh, so why they decided to retain this is not really sure. Uh, maybe uh, they, the manufacturer just decided to uh, copy it 100%. Uh, so, uh, uh, but there it is. The uh, there is a later version of uh, the uh, web belt uh, that was used, uh, kind of came into the late 90s. Uh, um, 2000, but that's a bit uh, besides the video that uh, removed this uh, once and for all. So, and if we have a look at the uh, buckle, the buckle is the exact same style, but the US one is slightly uh, the distance between the belt uh, at the front there is slightly bigger than on the Norwegian one. The uh, the uh, buckle. Uh, Retaining peg is that the right description? The retaining peg kind of sticks out a little bit more. That's basically what does it. Uh, if we look at it in kind of a profile, this is a bit difficult. Sorry, uh, you can see that the US one protrudes a little bit more uh, to the front as well. Uh, but other than, that, other than that, they are exactly the same. Uh, I think the US one is slightly uh, easier to take on and off uh, than the Norwegian made one, uh, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so moving on, we have the braces, and again we have the US one uh, uh, here, and the Norwegian produced one here. Uh, now, uh, this is where we start seeing a bit more um, more differences. Uh, the Though the uh, Norwegian produced one is uh, a functional copy of the M44 uh, braces. Um, 
but uh, we'll, we're going to see some of the differences uh, just uh, as we go along. And uh, just mentioning right off the top, the M44 uh, bases would have seen uh, service into the 80s, but uh, they would not be common to see uh, by that time period. So uh, these would come in, uh, I believe, in the mid 1970s. Um, I haven't been able to find any um, any data on it, but uh, the earliest, earliest one I've seen is dated uh, sometime in the late 1970s. So most of these are dated in the 80s. Um, so just jumping uh, right in, we have just a look at the back end. Um, they, uh, the way they cross at the back. Uh, are very similar in style, but as you can see, the uh, Norwegian belt is kind of crimps in here, and then goes to these thinner uh, web straps, while the US one kind of continues a bit more with the uh, wider uh, web straps, and then goes on into the uh, thinner web straps. So, uh, of course, taking a look at the buckles, we have uh, on the US one, we have a bit more intricate uh, adjustable buckle. Uh, uh, these won't uh, go up uh, uh, on their own. Uh, they retain the, the adjustments very well, uh, but they are a bit more difficult to adjust properly. Uh, the Norwegian one is just a, a simple sliding buck buckle with a metal layer reinforcement at the end. The hooks are uh, exactly the same style. Uh, the Norwegian one is slightly has slightly more straight angles, but that's really just a minor minor difference. Uh, uh, it wouldn't really surprise me if uh, uh, some of these Norwegian made ones are made with US parts, uh, but I can't confirm that. And moving on along the straps, we have uh, the uh, new newer Norwegian ones are not a, don't have these uh, loops here or these. This buckle, which is on the US one, is made for a haversack, but can uh, get in the way if you're carrying a backpack, uh, especially if the backpack is quite uh, loaded. Um, uh, these can cause a bit more pain, so that's why they got rid of them on the Norwegian one, didn't need them. And moving on, uh, here we can see even more differences. Uh, the US one have these uh, very thin uh, web straps that's just uh, goes uh, horizontally across uh, and it's uh, very handy to uh, keep on uh, hand grenades, uh, torches, uh, you know, the classical uh, military torch of the time. Uh, and But the uh, Norwegian ones decided to uh, retain this uh, on the, the newer ones. Um, so they uh, probably liked the design of being able to hold, do hold uh, hand grenades uh, in this way. And as we go on, we can see a bit more differences. The US one has, of course, two front uh, straps, uh, but where one is mounted uh, at the bottom and one is mounted at the top, the Norwegian one is layers across uh, and is sewn, uh, sewn shut here. So not really much to do uh, about that. So this is a bit more similar to the M36, US M36 uh, braces uh, in that regard. Uh, also, the, these uh, D-rings are quite similar to the US uh, M36 one. Uh, and moving on, so all of these uh, uh, buckles are the same on all, uh, all of these uh, straps. Uh, the exact same style. They clearly like this uh, style, so they went with it. Uh, the, uh, in my opinion, these are quite uh, annoying to adjust properly, uh, but once they're uh, properly adjusted, they won't uh, won't uh, go up or move around or anything. And as you may have noticed, uh, we have a black uh, electrician's tape here. Uh, this is uh, really, really, really common to see. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of it not being used, uh, just to keep the these straps from moving around. And and of course, the hooks are exactly the same as on the back. So that's it for braces. And moving on to water bottle, uh, this is the, as I mentioned before, the Norwegian made uh, copy of the US uh, M1910 
uh, water bottle and carrier. Uh, and of course, the if we open this a little bit, this is a bit tight. So sorry about that. And the uh, of course I have the same pile liner, uh, but this. Uh, I don't want to take this bottle out and damage the liner anymore because it's slightly damaged in the carrier. So, uh, but it, the uh, the bottle and the uh, the cup that's in it uh, is uh, uh, exactly the same as a US made one, just stamped with a Norwegian manufacturer's mark. And here we have a Norwegian uh, so-called M seventy five. Field bottle. I uh, don't know if that is is the uh, exact uh, uh, model number uh, or if it's just a collector's number. But anyways, uh, we now have a nylon cover. Still have the same uh, attachment hooks at the back. The uh, cork is uh, much bigger, uh, better to easier to get the water in and out of. And if we open it, we have. A plastic bottle. This one is a bit used, as you can see, and a plastic uh, cup. Um, of course, now uh, with this, you don't want to uh, boil water in, for example, uh, as you can with that one. But it doesn't really matter anyway because uh, uh, Norwegian troops would have carried a mess kit with them. If we look on the inside, uh, very thin liner. It doesn't really help much against the cold or heat. Uh, we also have a small pocket for uh, water filtration uh, tablets, uh, which is uh, handy. Besides, let's just quickly compare these. Uh, of course, we have don't have this uh, on the Norwegian one. We don't have the reinforced uh, seams at the front here, uh, and the placement of the press studs is slightly different, but not not really noticeable on the back we can see slightly different way of attaching the uh, hooks but uh, i have also seen uh, this type of style on us made ones so uh, it really just depends a little bit uh, that's basically it as far as uh, water bottles go let's uh, move on okay so moving on to the uh, entrenchment tools uh, Again, we have US uh, here and Norwegian made copy here. Um, now, um, I don't have the more appropriate uh, e tool to go uh, uh, with this, but it's uh, basically the exact same as the uh, German e tool, which I'll show a picture of uh, right now. Um, and basically, that web entered, entered service in the mid uh, 1980s. And, been carried uh, onwards uh, like that's uh, still in use uh, to this day in fact um, but here we have a US made shovel and a cover and let's just uh, compare the uh, covers right away um, we can already see a bit of a difference in the reinforcement rivets on the side here uh, here we have three really close ones we have three rivets that are spaced more apart uh, really the only difference and we also have a reinforcement uh, right here with uh, what I think is uh, fake uh, leather underneath uh, which you don't have on the US one the same style of uh, closure nothing new there and also we have a I'm not sure if you can see it but we have again the reinforcement leather which is underneath uh, this which don't reach quite the well, quite the way, uh, all the way on the US one, which is just a thick uh, webbing strap. On the back, um, of course, we have the uh, adjustable. Uh, you can move the hook around uh, depending on uh, how you want it. Uh, on the uh, Norwegian made one, you don't have that luxury. Luxury, it's fixed in position, but we do have a belt loop, so you can fix this to this belt uh, to your belt like this so it doesn't dangle around as much but uh, then it will slide around more in the belt so uh, so pick your poison I suppose um, and we're going to take a close look at the insides uh, markings uh, we have a batch number 
uh, date, so this is made in 1989, uh, and uh, of course the uh, Norwegian military property mark, which is just a very basic shield. Uh, oh, and by the way, I lied, uh, this is uh, a thick webbing strap, just as on the US made version. But we have here is this kind of fake leather, very thick and sturdy leather, uh, works quite well. Of course, on the US one, take this out, we have manufacturer's mark here, produced in 1944, uh, batch number, so on. Not really a lot to say. Uh, I think most people know it. Of course, uh, talking about the bayonet, we have here a first pattern of uh, AG3 bayonet, uh, which can be recognized by this kind of uh, knurled, uh, grippy surface on the sheath, and also the uh, thickness of the uh, attachment ring uh, right here. The second pattern is as a thicker one, and also the uh, Grip is kind of segmented, uh, kind of like a uh, Mark II uh, hand grenade. Uh, on the back here, uh, nothing really special about it. Uh, but some of you will probably think this looks all, an awful lot like a US uh, M3 uh, combat knife and sheath, which, which is a good observation because uh, a lot of these earlier ones were actually made from converted uh, M3 combat knives, uh, sheaths, and uh, blades, um, but uh, this is a purpose-produced uh, sheath and blade, uh, but we're going to just show you it's identical to the US M3 blade. Of course, we have the tension peg right here, pretty standard stuff. Uh, that's really it as far as the bayonet goes. Of course, you have a lanyard here to uh, tie around your leg, but I just left it as it is because this is uh, the way it uh, came straight from the factory, so I didn't really want to mess it up. And finally, we have the magazine pouches. Uh, as I said earlier, this is the second pattern of, uh, of uh, magazine pouch. Uh, the earlier ones had a press studs, which are uh, like this. Uh, the story goes that... Uh, the reason why they tried to change from the other ones to this is because that the uh, brass uh, press studs uh, pushed into the aluminium uh, G3 magazines and caused uh, a harm to them. So they tried to change to these, which are made of plastic. I'm going to go into detail soon. Uh, but uh, this didn't uh, do all that much. So later on they changed to just a simple kind of uh, tab that goes into like a sleeve thingy uh, that did fix the problem and I'm going to show you a picture of how that looks uh, right now but uh, over the three main patterns the basic uh, design didn't change and uh, of course looking at the back side we have the ring here for attaching to the braces uh, this stays the same in all of the patterns uh, and we all have two basic uh, belt loops and also this uh, kind of hook thingy that will look uh, very familiar to uh, those of you who collect British stuff uh, because this is intentionally made to fit onto a uh, pattern, <coughs> sorry, a British pattern 37 uh, webbing belt because uh, I guess the thought was that uh, in the case of a war they didn't want to rely on only using current equipment and then that they may have to use uh, stored equipment, which Norway had a fair amount of Pendant 37 uh, webbing belts uh, in their inventory at the time. But these also uh, help uh, magazine pouches from sliding around on the US M36 uh, webbing uh, belt as well. Uh, when you kind of get these on top, they won't uh, slide uh, between the eyelets, uh, which is quite handy because these loops don't do a good job of uh, keeping the magazine pouches in place. And just taking a close look at the uh, dates. Uh, of course, we have the same uh, shield here. We have a batch number and a made in 1971. Uh, as I said earlier, these were 
these replacement pouches were made quite early on, but uh, uh, the first pattern of pouches would have been, uh, of course, used as long as uh, uh, they were usable. Uh, you'd, if you made a lot of uh, pouches, you're not going to throw them away. Okay, so that's the end of uh, this video. Uh, as uh, I said uh, earlier on, this is a project I've been uh, uh, working on for some time. Uh, it's not always uh, super easy to get everything you're looking for. And uh, as always, if you have any comments or questions, then leave them down below. Uh, more than happy to answer uh, anything. Uh, and until uh, the next video, goodbye.